Hello, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use the procedural Lego brick generator to make a tiling material in Substance Designer. So this is the brick generator we made previously. I added a few more features. So the default settings were the size, of course, so we can make a bigger brick. And I've also added a feature here to make this part smaller. So we can increase this or lower this if you want to. So that was a nice addition to add. I've also added a color. So, of course, Lego bricks have a color, so we can add a color and I'll also have a roughness value on the material here. So this is the base of my bricks. So what I want to do now for my simulation is I need more bricks. So there are multiple ways of doing this. And for now, I'm just going to copy this note and make more bricks. So now we have multiple bricks, so everyone has some variation, so these are these are quickly made. And I want to use them these in a simulation. Now to continue, what I will also do is I'm going to store an attribute on each of them that has a number. So I'm going to create an attribute. And I'm going to call it brick number. So brick number and of course here is the default value it will have and in this case i'm going to start it with zero then i'm just going to simply copy this and this is then number one so i'm going to repeat this for the other ones as well so now that i set up so each of them have a specific number that i could call if i want to so now I'm going to merge them all together. So hold Alt key and click and drag. Now they're all merged together, as you can see. And now I want to spawn a bunch of these around. So I'm going to use a grid. And with this grid, we can simply here set it to points because we only want the point information. So on each point, there will be a brick. So I will use a copy to points, of course. So here, this is the geometry. These are the points. So copy bricks on these points. So a few problems now is that they are too big and they are all, all overlapping on each other. So I'm going to place down here a transform node. And let's scale this down. So this is a bit better, probably even a bit lower. Now I want a system that each point has a different Lego brick. And we can use this number we created. So we can use the brick number. So I'm going to copy paste this name. And on the grid over here, I'm going to assign a random number of bricks. So I'm going to use a randomized attribute. Now this random attribute will be called, of course, the brick number. And it has to be a type of the uniform discrete. So if I would now open my sprite sheet here, we can see that the number goes from 944987. So you can see it's a very random number. But of course, my maximum break here goes to number 5. So let's also fill in here maximum value number 5. So it will go from 0 to 5 in steps of one. And it also has to be a dimension one because I'll need one value. If you want to have a seat, we can go here to option and we have a seat value and you can see these values changing. Now we can plug this in over here. Then in the copy to points note itself, there is an option to use the brick number. So we can use piece attributes and instead of the variant name, we're going to fill in our custom name, which is called brick number. Now, right now it's not working. And the reason why it is not working is this is actually a float and it needs to be an integer. So I'm going to cast this attribute into an integer. So here we have our brick number. And it's now set to float, but I want to have it as integer. And now you can see 
it is set to an integer so it doesn't have that dot zero anymore and if i would now plug this in we can see that now my system is working so it's very important to know that these are integers so now we have a bunch of these laid out and like i said before we can go here to options seat and we can play around here with my seat slider to have different layouts so we have different variations in here i can see over here that it is also still overlapping that some pieces are overlapping so i'm going to scale a little bit down like this so they are not intersecting with each other now another thing we can do here as well is add random rotation which i will be using the randomize attribute again and there are multiple ways of doing random rotations but to keep it easy i'm going to fill in here the normal direction and i'm going to have a random normal so as you could see here i have a random normal direction and the pieces are now doing random rotations we can go a bit further and go from minus one to one so they have even more randomness going on and here again we have the seat slider and we can play around with this as well so this is the basic setup of how we are going to scatter these around and have random variations in here now i've kept this quite simple in setup there are better ways of doing this for example doing a loop system and in each loop we can also generate a different lego brick so we have even more variation going on but just to keep things a bit more simple i've set it up this way so it's quite understandable now what if you also want to import a custom model let's say you don't have the lego brick generator or you want to import custom debris pieces or something else to simulate you can just use the file node here and with this file node you can load in your fbx file so here you will fill in then the path of the file and then you can just plug this in in the system here as well so let's start with the simulation later i will spawn more of these but for now let's just use this as example i'm going to introduce you to a quite powerful node so we're going to type in solver and we're going to go for the rigid body bullet solver and this is a quite powerful node that does all the simulation setup for you. So you're going to just plug in the geometry here in the first input. And that's almost it. So let me get my timeline. And when we press play now, the bricks are just falling. So by default, this is already a simulation. So they are just falling. So what we need is a ground plane. So in here, there are a lot of settings. If you're interested in doing more simulations i can highly recommend you looking into this node because it has some really great features but for now let's just do simple things with it and add a ground plane so i'm going to go here to the ground option and we're going to add a simple ground plane and now we can see a ground plane has been added now what i can see is that my bricks are on the same level so either we can move the ground plane or we could place down a transform node and move up my pieces. So everything here is then nicely in the center of my world. So I've just placed up this bit higher. And when we press play now, you will see that we have our basic simulation and when they touch the ground, they will bounce a bit. So now we have set up this simulation. So as you can see, this is a quite powerful note by just plugging this in and adding a ground plane, everything already works. Now we can also add a custom collision. So in case you are interested in doing custom collisions, this is also how I made that simulation from previous video, which you can see here. So for a custom collision, Let's say I want that these Lego bricks fall on something else before touching the ground. So let's say I want to spawn a box and they will fall first on this surface before actually falling on the ground plane. So like this, for example. So we can plug this in over here with the collision geometry. 
So when I reset my simulation, they will now fall on this part and then nicely fall on the ground. As you can see here, that also works immediately. And now they are just like falling like this. So that's how you can sort of control a bit more in the simulation. But again, this is a very interesting node to work with and you can do a lot more with this than these simple demonstrations. Now I come to the point that I want to add more bricks. So what I will do here, my grid, I'm going to duplicate the grid and I'm just going to basically create more points. So we can duplicate this grid, we can have a random rotation on this and we can set how many one how many we want to. So in here we can add a lot more points. I don't want to add too much, so maybe not six. So there are multiple ways of how we could do this. If you have also watched my previous video where I also did a simulation, uh, I've done a sphere instead of a grid, which can also be working fine. So in here I just used a grid. You can basically use anything you want as long as it have point information. So then we have a lot more of these going on and you can see there they are still randomly scattered along these points and now i'm going to do my final uh, simulation so i'm just going to hit play and then wait until i have around for example 70 or 90 frames something to work with So here I rendered out around 90 frames and we can see that we have a nice pile of Lego bricks going on. And this can then be used to create my tiling material. So now we can play around a bit with the frames if we want to. So now interesting part is how are we going to make this tileable? I'm going to use here a node called Mesh Tiler. And this node is part of the lab still, so it's a labs node. So if you have not found this node, that means you have not installed the labs node, so which can be found over here, and then you can install them. So make sure you are having this tab. If you don't have this tab, open shelves and install lab tools. Very important, very useful tools. So for this tile measure to work, we have to plug in our geometry to tile, which will be uh, our result and we also have to set a ground plane so this will be the region of the tile so i'm going to spawn down the grid i'm going to go in top view and my grid will then be saying where my tiling should start and let's start by size 7 by 7 so if I would fill this in here, the tiling would be this part, and I think that will be okay. The rows and columns can just be two. So you can play around with this value on what region you want to have as tiling. So now let's fill in our geometry here and my tiling grid here, and let's see the result. So this is done my result. We can also do a debug, so you can click this. And now we have a debug view. Let's make this bigger. So everywhere where we have this red border, that means that pieces are have been changed to be tileable. And we can also remove that color if you want to, to just have a quick look on how it will look without it. And overall, I think it did a really good job of making this styleable. We can play around with these values more if you want to. Like for example here, if you would set for example the tile edge density to zero, we basically remove all these pieces. So in here we can control a bit how many pieces are scattered there. So it can happen sometimes that there is still some overlapping there. So we can then play around with this value. So right now we have this result that looks pretty good so let's go back to my original here 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock in my result. So in here, I'm going to press the lock. And the note will always now output the same result. So even if I would break this, the note will still output this result because it's locked. So it stores this information in the note, basically. So it's very important to know. So I just lock this. So I always have the same result. If I would, for example, open or close the file or something would change up here, I will always have this result that will be my final result in the end. So now the last step is to get a height map. So I'm going to use down the maps baker. So labs maps baker. This will input a low poly and the high poly. So of course my high poly is my simulation and the low poly will actually be this plane but I need to unwrap it. So if I have to go to my unwrapping view, there is nothing there. So let's lay down a unwrap node. And now I have an unwrap and I want to set the spacing to zero. So now my UV is taking the full space from zero to one. And this can then be plugged in in my low poly. So that's also been set up. Now here in the maps baker, we have our location where to save it. We have our resolution. We have our tracing mode and how far it is. We can also visualize it here. So make sure you are working in the region. It can maybe be a little bit less like this. So it's nicely capturing that region. Then here we are having all the maps we want to export. So I'm mainly interested in the height map and I want to have to diffuse because I know the colors of my bricks are stored in the diffuse. If you would have vertex colors, you can enable here vertex colors. You can also bake other maps like AO curvature or other things you want to. But the main thing I'm interested in here is the height and the color of my Lego bricks. So once that's filled in, I'm going to just simply click bake. And in a few seconds, we have then my result. So the bake was done in like about 10 seconds. And this is the result that I'm having now. So this is my height map, which is nicely rendered. We can clearly see our, our bricks and a nice gradient along there to create the height information. And here, this is the color. And I can use this either as a mask, a material mask, ID mask, or I can just directly use this as input for my diffuse to have a color on my brick. So now, Let's go into Substance Designer and use this information. So here in Substance Designer, I made a very simple setup and this is already the result that we are getting. So it looks quite believable. Everything has a nice overlapping feel in it. So in here, we have our two images that we load in. So this is the height map, this is the color. So here from the height map, I just make a little bit adjustments, do an auto level, then I'm going to get a normal map from this. So this is then the normal. From here, we are going to, of course, get the ambient occlusion and our curvature. Then further here with the color, I'm going to place down a hue and saturation node so we can control these values. Then further, I'm mixing a little bit of AO in my base color. So it has, so it has the feeling of depth in there. And here for my roughness, I just multiply the AO and the curvature together and then control it with the level node to get my roughness. So here, what is really powerful is actually the hue and saturation. So if I would just drag around with my hue, we can see that I can just with one slider control how everything is colored. So this works really well here in this case. And this is basically how you can do a simulation in Houdini and get it into designer. So it's a quite simple setup. And once you have this setup, it is quite powerful to plug in more objects or different objects. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you for watching and special thanks to all of my patrons.